Breakthrough Nanochip heals injuries with just one touch. Researchers at Ohio State University have developed a new technology that allows the body to generate any type of cell to help heal injuries. Tissue nanotransfection involves placing a fingernail-sized nanochip on a patient's skin, adding a droplet of genetic material, and zapping it with an electrical current. The DNA is delivered through channels created by the current, and it reprograms skin cells to turn into specific cell types that can then be used in other parts of the body. When tested on a mouse with a damaged leg, researchers found vascular cells converted from skin cells formed new blood vessels that allowed the leg to heal in two weeks. The non-invasive technology was also able to generate nerve cells in the legs of brain-damaged mice. Once the cells were harvested, they were injected into the brain to help with stroke recovery. The nanochip also tested effectively in pigs and is expected to be approved for human trials within a year. Don't let YouTube ad bots dictate what Tomo News reports. Support us at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Medicine has definitely come a long way. Malaria vaccine could lead to general cure for cancer. Scientists researching a vaccine against malaria in pregnant women may have accidentally discovered an effective weapon against cancer. Scientists from the University of Copenhagen and the University of British Columbia have identified that the carbohydrate the malaria parasite attaches itself to in the placenta of a pregnant woman is identical to a carbohydrate present in cancer cells. Scientists have created the protein that the malaria parasite uses to attach to the placenta in a laboratory and have added a toxin. The combination of the malaria protein and toxin finds cancer cells, is absorbed, then the toxin is released inside, causing the cancer cells to die. Research groups from the two universities have tested thousands of samples from brain tumors to leukemias and have found that the malaria protein is able to attack more than 90% of all types of tumors. The drug was tested on mice implanted with three types of human tumors, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, prostate cancer, and metastatic bone cancer. The mice that were given doses of protein and toxin showed far higher survival rates than the untreated mice. Researchers are now working towards being able to conduct human trials. They say the earliest possible time frame would be in four years. Man's paralyzed limb reanimated with the help of a brain chip. A team from Ohio has made a medical breakthrough, successfully developing technology that allows brain signals to bypass a spinal injury and transmit straight to the muscles. When Ian Burkhart broke his neck four years ago, it damaged his spinal cord and left him paralyzed from the chest down. He retained some movement in his shoulders and biceps, but lost sensation in his hands and legs. To help him, doctors inserted a chip the size of an eraser head into his motor cortex, the area of the brain that controls hand movements. The chip records brain signals for specific hand movements and sends these to a computer via a port on the back of Burkhardt's head. Once the signals are decoded, they're transmitted to an arm sleeve studded with electrodes. The electrodes stimulate the muscles and allow them to move. The system, called NeuroLife, has allowed Burkhardt to make six different hand and wrist motions. It marks the first time a paralyzed man has been able to regain movement using recorded brain signals. Limitless blood supply is not too far off. It's taken nearly two decades, but scientists may finally have the recipe to create stem cells, that wellspring of life and holy grail of regenerative medicine. A Boston research team programmed human pluripotent stem cells to become endothelial cells, which typically line the inside of blood vessels. These were injected with special proteins called transcription factors, then transplanted into mice. Weeks later, the cells had multiplied, and in some cases formed a wide range of human blood cells in the mice's bodies. A second research team used blood cells from mice and injected them with a mix of transcription factors. The cells morphed into stem cells after incubating in petri dishes designed to mimic a human blood vessel environment. When injected into weak mice that had been treated with radiation, the stem cells regenerated both blood and immune cells. The mice recovered and went on to live full lifespans. The groundbreaking research from both teams provides hope for patients who suffer from blood cancers and other diseases. But tests need to be carried out to determine any negative effects before the procedure can go to human trials.
Hey, Tomo Sapiens, help us beat the ad bots by joining our Patreon news squad at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Fetal pacemaker ready for human trials. Researchers at the University of Southern California first developed a micro pacemaker for fetuses five years ago, and the device is now ready for its first human trial. The fetal pacemaker is a slim cylinder with components that include a single transistor relaxation oscillator, an epoxy capsule, and a small lithium battery. The pacemaker is implanted into a fetus through a 3.8 millimeter diameter insertion cannula. The battery is able to power the device for about a week. When the power runs low, a high-powered field generator can be used to generate a radio frequency magnetic field outside the body. This wirelessly recharges the battery through inductive coupling. The device, which has been successfully tested in sheep fetuses in the past, was granted humanitarian use in 2015 by the FDA. Are cows the cure for HIV? U.S. government-funded HIV research in cattle may hold promise for future HIV treatments. In a study, scientists injected four calves' flanks with HIV. The cattle's own immune system first produced antibodies that nullified 20% of the virus in 42 days and counteracted 96% of the HIV virus within 381 days. Researchers theorized the cattle were able to do this due to their robust digestive system that encounters a variety of bacteria. The research may point to cattle being a source of medicine in the future. Molecule from tree found to be able to treat iron deficiency. Researchers have discovered that the molecule henokitiol restores iron transport in cells with missing or defective iron transporter proteins, dubbing it molecular prosthetics. In healthy cells, transport proteins move iron across the cell membrane, where it's needed to make hemoglobin that carries oxygen to the body. If the transporter is missing or defective, iron cannot cross through the cell membrane. The lack of iron reduces hemoglobin production and the body's red blood cell count. This decreases the body's oxygen levels and causes the heart to pump faster. A trio of henokitiol molecules has been found to restore the transporter function. The polar ends bind to iron, while the nonpolar ends create a shield, allowing it to cross into the cell membrane. With cells now receiving iron, hemoglobin production and red blood cell count are both restored to normal levels. Henokitiol has been tested on animals, where it's been shown to promote iron uptake in the guts of mice and prompt hemoglobin production in zebrafish. In future studies, researchers hope to develop similar drugs to treat transporter protein-related diseases, such as cystic fibrosis and lupus. 